Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I wish to start by relating an incident that happened to me or happened in my rookie year as an, as an MP. I was having a cup of tea with honourable members at a table in the members' room. From the corner of my eye, I saw the Prime Minister entering the room and walking to us. I said to my parliamentary colleagues in what I thought was an undertone, boss coming. After sitting down beside me, Prime Minister turned to me and said, I'm not your boss. <laughs> Thinking back, what the Prime Minister said profoundly captures the essence of the relationship between a backbencher MP of the governing party and the political office holders. As MPs of the governing party, we are not subordinates of the ministers. On the contrary, we have an important responsibility in scrutinizing government action and holding ministers to account. It is worth reminding ourselves that structurally, we are independent and free to express our thoughts in this House on matters that affect our constituents and Singaporeans. The principle of collective responsibility that binds the Cabinet does not extend to backbenchers of the governing party. Of course, we have to abide by the whip in voting according to party platform. That's a separate matter involving party discipline, and that applies to opposition MPs too. My party colleagues and I in the backbench take this responsibility of holding ministers to account seriously. We engage ministers through correspondence, face-to-face -face meetings, and party caucuses. We also do this through the parliamentary processes, particularly by filing parliamentary questions and motions. This provides an added advantage, the sunlight of scrutiny of government action, something honourable members know I have advocated for in this House not too long ago. There's therefore a healthy tension in the relationship between us. It's not at all personal. On one hand, as MPs, we accord the minister, his office and ministry with respect. At the same time, the minister takes our feedback seriously. He knows we cannot be browbeaten. He knows that we will not hesitate to pursue issues important to our constituents and fellow Singaporeans. This is how we prevent groupthink and the creation of echo chambers within the PAP. In short, we have backbone, we are independent, we strive to keep the ministers on the straight and narrow. At the same time, we are fully responsible and accountable for our actions too. We reflect this reality in our daily interactions with all political office holders and civil servants. I shall now discuss the Ministry of Education's decision announced on the 9th of February 2023 to relocate Bukit View Primary School, BVPS, to a place outside the constituency by January 2027. <clears throat> Let me lay out the facts first. BVPS commenced operations in 1986. It provides essential primary school services to residents of Bukit Bato SMC and nearby constituencies. Over more than three and a half decades, the school forged a close relationship with the Bukit Bato community. Senior community leaders and residents of Bukit Bato, as well as former students, serve in the School Advisory Committee, SAC. The community, through the SAC and grassroots organizations, gives tangible support to BVPS in form of raising funds for the school's development plans, helping children from less privileged backgrounds, and providing opportunities to school students to develop their character by participating in community assignments. Its importance became more accentuated after the recent completion of BTO projects in the vicinity between 2017 and 2018. They are Skyline 1 and 2 and Sky Peak. These BTOs comprise about 2,700 units. That translates to about 10,000 people. The majority of these units are occupied by young couples and families with young children. In fact, BVPS was specifically used to advertise the desirability of these BTO flats in HDB brochures. Let me read out an excerpt from the brochure advertising Skyline 1 and 2 at Bukit Bato. Under the header, Feel the Pulse of Vibrant Living, it is stated as follows, quote, parents with school-going children will be delighted to find a good range of educational institutions in close proximity. This includes Bukit View Primary, unquote. I now go to the brochure advertising Sky Peak at Bukit Batu. Under the header where conveniences abound, it stated, quote, schools in the vicinity include Bukit View Primary, unquote. BVPS also provided a photo for the brochure and was accredited for it. On 18 May 2018, <coughs> students and parents of BVPS were told that the school, which was originally scheduled 
for on-site upgrading would instead be shifted temporarily to the former site of Shu Chin Secondary School for two years from January 2020 to December 2021. This is to facilitate major upgrading works at the school. This caused some concern amongst parents who had to make transport arrangements to shuttle their children to and fro the new site. Thankfully, with understanding from all sites concerned and arrangements such as school bus services at an attractive rate, the concerns were largely addressed. In July 2019, MOE informed the students and parents of BVPS that as more time was required to enhance the design of the upgrading to allow for more efficient use of space and better traffic management, the BVPS upgrading plan would be delayed by one year. As a result, the move was postponed to January 2021 instead. The school was to return to the site by 20, December 2022. Around a year later, in 2020, the students and parents were told that the move would be delayed further by, a one, by one year from January 2021 to January 2022 instead. On 11th March 2021, whilst we were in the midst of the pandemic, BVPS informed its students and parents that the upgrading plans for BVPS, which was scheduled to begin in January 2022, has been put on hold. By that time, the former Suchin Secondary School site, which BVPS was supposed to move into, was used as a regional screening center. It remains as a joint testing and vaccination center. It's therefore well known that the move cannot happen owing to the effect of the pandemic. They were told as follows. BVPS will be staying put. P MOE will be reviewing the project requirements further and pertinently, they will be kept informed on the review outcome once it is completed. In a separate development, going back to 2020, PCF Sparkle Tots at Sky Peak, which is located near BVPS, was told that BVPS was to be designated as an MOE kindergarten from 1st January 2024. PCF was asked to partner the MOE kindergarten at BVPS. PCF expanded its infant care and childcare facilities so it can provide a pipeline for enrollment at the MOE kindergarten at BVPS. The expansion works were completed in or around 2021. In November 2022, AGDA informed PCF that the partnership with MOE Kindergarten at BVPS is delayed to 2027-2028. I wish to add that news about the designation of BVPS as a, as a site of the MOE Kindergarten percolated into the community. I personally spoke to two persons, Madam Wendy Koh and Mr. Dennis Chua, both residing at Sky Peak on Monday this week. They told me that they were aware of this matter and had welcomed this development. Against this backdrop, the government's decision dated 9th February 2023 to relocate BVPS came like a boat from the blue. I spoke to BVPS SAC Chairman, Mr. Tommy To, Vice Chairman, Mr. Sunny Yuan, as well as Mr. Don Te, the SAC, an SEC member last week. They informed that the school told them the news about one hour before MOE went public. Mr. Tommy To, an old boy of the school, who also got his two daughters to attend the same school, expressed that he was, quote, shock, unquote, at the decision. He felt that the SAC should have been consulted and its views solicited as a key stakeholder. Mr. Don Te felt the same way and informed that he does not fault the principal of the school. As she told him, she too got to know of the decision without much prior notice. I learned about the matter on the same day of the announcement. So my first question to the Honourable Minister is simply this. Against the backdrop of the facts I outlined, why was there no consultation? We are not dealing with an urgent matter that requires decisive action such as defending the Singapore dollar. We are not also dealing with a market-sensitive matter such as increasing stamp duty to buy properties. On the contrary, we are dealing with a decision to withdraw essential educational services from a neighbourhood. Surely there should be consultation amongst the affected residents, parents, SAC members, and other stakeholders. This was the point that several residents made to me. Mr. Jeremy Ng and his wife are a young couple. They reside at Sky Peak. They moved in around 2018. They're trying to have children. They also have a five-year-old nephew whom they're taking care of. 
Their decision to purchase a unit at Sky Peak was influenced by the fact that there will be primary school services within walking distance. This was what was represented in the HDB brochures. One of the schools in the vicinity, Kerming Primary School, Kerming, is perpetually full by Pace 2C. Hence, BVPS provides an important assurance that they will be able to secure a primary school place within walking distance from their home. Another person, Madam Linda Chong, also a Sky Peak resident, has two children, aged 19 months and five years, respectively. Her elder child was born in the same year she moved into Sky Peak, 2018. She's naturally concerned about the lack of MOE kindergarten and primary school facilities within walking distance once BVPS moves out. In fact, I wonder if the Honourable Minister's attention was drawn to the representations made in the HDB brochures, EGDA's communication about, CP, about PCF Sparkle Tots partnering the MOE kindergarten at BVPS, as well as prior communication to the parents at the time when the decision to relocate BVPS was made. If not, this is precisely why a consultation with stakeholders would have helped. In comparison, I note from a Mothership article dated 10 February 2023 that the government was in consultation with ACS Board of Governors for a year before the announcement to move ACS to Tenga was announced also on the 9th of February 2023. I appreciate that there are differences in details of the two moves, but both are relocations of schools which are important community nodes. My second question is, why were there so many flip-flops on what to do with BVPS within a short span of time, even accounting for the effect of the pandemic? Respectfully, it doesn't give people confidence that MOE is on top of the matter and has made proper plans for the future. Such relocations, when not given proper notice, causes real hardship to families. This point was raised to me by Mr. Nazri, whom I met at a house visit just last week. He and his wife have two children. The elder child, a daughter, is in primary one at BVPS. They had originally attempted to get a place for her at Princess Elizabeth Primary School, PEPS. The Honourable Minister would know that the local demand for primary one places at PEPS has shot up significantly after the completion of housing developments in a neighbouring constituency. It's not surprising, therefore, that they failed to be balloted a place at PEPS, even though they were living close by. They therefore enrolled her in BVPS, which was about 1.5 kilometres away. Fortunately, Mrs Nasri's mother is living nearby and therefore is able to take care of his daughter while he and his wife are working. By 2027, however, when the school is due to move to a new site, which is at, which is at least two kilometres away, she will be in primary five. Both Mr. and Mrs. Nazri are concerned that the move will further inconvenience them, and I fully appreciate their angst. My third and final question is, having withdrawn essential primary school services, what is the government's plan to support affected children and parents in Bukit Bato SMC? In this regard, I highlight again that within the past five years, there are three completed BTO developments in Bukit Bato SMC. This shows there is and continues to be demand for primary one places in this constituency. To underscore this point, I wish to point out that PEPS and Kerming, the two primary schools that are close to Bukit Batok residents, are perpetually oversubscribed for primary one places for a number of years now. BVPS therefore continues to provide an essential service to Bukit Batok, which is appreciated by all. There's also an impact posed by the reversal of a decision to operate an MOE kindergarten at the BVPS site. What is the alternative for these affected families? I say all this not because I disagree with the decision per se, or as a petulant response to a lack of consultation. If I, the SAC members, affected residents and parents had nothing of value to add, if the discussion would have yielded no additional insights, if there were no people who acted in reliance of certain facts which are now changed, if all these were the case, it is perfectly fine that we learn of this ex post facto. I wonder, though, whether this is the position that the Honourable Minister takes. I look forward to hearing him.